Tulips are a true symbol that spring is here, and it's probably one of the most recognized spring flowers that we have. It is well known for its bright color, and it's no wonder that we have them planted in gardens all across the world. In fact, they're such a popular plant that at one point in their history, they actually were traded, the bulbs were traded as currency. With such an array of color and variation, you can see we've got some that are double, we've got some that have more of the pointed parrot style, and then even some of the fringed ones. Um, they come in, in quite a selection, and when you're planting them in your landscape, it's almost like painting, that you can add yellow to an area or red to an area to really set off that area in early spring. One of the big things about them also is they come in different um, stages of bloom time so that you can plant them and have your display change through those spring weeks. Now, one of the drawbacks to our beloved tulip, hybrid tulips, is that they're often treated as annuals. And so with some of them being quite pricey, that's quite an investment in your tulips. However, if you have invested in species tulips, such as what we have here, then you might get a little more bang for your buck. Now, there are some differences, obviously. You can see the hybrid tulips really have been bred to have an impressive flower on top of them, whereas a lot of your species tulips are gonna be a little more dainty. You can see also the foliage is typically more narrow and smaller as well. This past fall, we planted several species tulips in order to really evaluate their performance and how well they returned for us. So obviously this is their first spring, so we expected all of them to kind of come up and make an appearance. We planted about 25 of each of the species tulips that we were able to find. Now one of the first ones that we noticed of ours that we planted here was the Tulipa clusiana variety chrysantha. It produces this bold yellow color like hybrids. However, you'll notice that it is much more smaller and a compact flower. The other thing is you'll notice that it has these red sepals on the outside, kind of giving it more of a bicolored appearance, especially if it's a cloudy day when they might not open up as much. You'll see the yellow and red bicolor appearance. Another Clusiana that we have is Cynthiana and it is very similar, again, giving you that bicolored appearance. Now, another variety, again, under Clusiana is Stellata, and the difference between it is that it has more of a white interior petals with rose-colored sepals that kind of create more of a blush-colored tulip. Again, these sort of remind me of like a rain lily look to them, um, especially when they're fully open on a sunny day. Now, very similar to those are two cultivars called Lady Jane and Peppermint Stick. And both are very similar, again, with kind of that rosy or blush colored uh, sepal with a white interior, um, giving you that bicolored look. However, they do vary a little bit in their appearance as well as their height mainly is what I noticed here. Another yellow species, if you're really trying to get more of that tulip, that bright colored yellow, is to try Tulipa sylvestris. Um, it has a pure yellow color through and through, um, and it's definitely going to bring somebody's attention. Again, much smaller though than your typical hybrid yellow tulips that you might have. However, again, we're going to hopefully see these return and multiply over the years. Probably one of the most unique uh, looking tulips is the Tulipida Turkstanica. Now a lot of times when we think of a tulip bulb, the hybrid tulips, we think we get about one flower per bulb, whereas this Turkstanica is going to produce more of a cluster of flowers and sort of actually kind of reminds me of something that looks like a snowdrop, um, having some tiny little bell-like tulip flowers on it. And again, as the sun comes out more, they really open up to reveal more of a star shape to them. And they sort of have like a little bit of a blush color to the outside of their petals as well. Tulipa watalii is going to have more of a traditional look where you do get the single flower per bulb that you plant in there. Again, slightly smaller, so you're going to want to plant your bulbs a little bit closer together. But it offers kind of a really unique red coppery color to your garden. Uh, the flowers are held up on really thin stems and they almost kind of look like windsocks as they kind of blow over in the wind a little bit. 
Now, if you're really looking to add a little more color, because I know some of these are a little bit daintier to add into your garden, if you're looking for some more of an impact from your species tulips, you might want to look at Shogun Tulipia Tarda or Tulipia Bakeri Lilac Wonder. Um, these are all going to offer you a little bit of a bolder color to their flower um, and a bigger flower, I should say, also. While they are a little bit shorter, Shogun is going to offer you a really nice apricot orange color, whereas um, Tarda is going to have a, a beautiful yellow center where the tips of it are kind of tipped in white. And then finally, Lilac Wonder is going to offer you a yellow center with kind of a pale purple pink flower to it. So I really like these. They kind of have a little more of the traditional, but yet yeah, again, a simple single flower to them. Now we have about three other species tulips that haven't quite bloomed for us just yet, um, but Tulipia humulus um, is said to be one of the earlier blooming tulips. It, um, the one we have is Persian pearl, but yet we have uh, yet to really see it come up just yet. We also have Tulipia linifolia, which is a red flower, and then Tulipia batlinii um, or bronze charm which still has buds on it and should be blooming shortly for us so we're excited to see those and while we didn't necessarily plan this walkway as far as a beautiful display of big hybrid tulips that wasn't the point what we did here was we planted different plots of about 25 of various species in order to be able to identify how well they're doing, which ones are growing, and which ones hopefully will return for us next spring. You can also definitely see the differences between them. Some of them have, like this is the Shogun next to us here, have very similar foliage that you might find, some of that broader, waxier foliage, whereas such as Lady Jane here next to me has a very thin foliage. So again, they're gonna look slightly different than your traditional hybrid tulips, but the nice thing is, is that you should get a return on your investment. So we're excited to see how many will come back and we'll report that next spring. Now, as far as planting them, you're going to plant them like you would do your traditional bulbs. Because they're a little bit smaller, you might wanna plant them a little bit closer and also a little bit more shallow, again, depending on which, uh, which actual species you get. The other thing is they don't like wet feet either. So this is a really ideal plant to put in somewhere, say an alpine or rock garden where it's gonna get good drainage and add just that soft, unique texture to your garden. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.